My name is Mary Mannheim. I'm a forensic anthropologist and I'm director of the LSU Forensic Anthropology and Computer Enhancement Services, or FACES Laboratory. The LSU FACES Lab works with law enforcement agencies all across the country to help identify unidentified human skeletal remains and also to help uh, find missing people. The Monitor is a very, very famous uh, ironclad ship uh, that was built in the 1800s and it was used during the Civil War. Uh, in 1862 it was being towed to shore. It wasn't even in a battle. It was being towed to shore for repairs uh, when it tipped over and there were 50, 60 men on board. 16 of them went missing and therefore they were either lost at sea or perhaps trapped uh, in the boat itself. They've known that the Monitor was where it was, I think since the 1970s, and then in 2003, they decided to pull part of it up. So they pulled up the gun turret, and inside the gun turret, they found two sets of human skeletal remains. Well, we were told the story by Dr. Wayne Smith of Texas A&M, who is an archeologist who worked with NOAA and other groups on this whole project. And Dr. Smith came over, met us, looked at the work that we do in terms of facial reconstructions, and was very interested in our helping them and so that's how we got together. The Monitor situation is a wonderful mystery and we work with mysteries all the time. Uh, much of our work involves trying to recreate a face or an image of what the person might have looked like in life because many of our cases are just skeletonized cases. So we've worked on hundreds and hundreds of cases in the past, most of them forensic in nature but also some historic cases. It's both uh, artistic license and scientific evidence. That skull tells us whether or not that person is black, white, Native American. From that, we will then cut tissue depth markers to a very specific length based on research that's been completed that says the average tissue thickness in a particular area of the skull is a particular uh, length. So what we will do is place markers across the skull, add clay to that. In building the mouth, we know that the mouth typically moves from canine to canine tooth. The, the uh, height of the lips is typically uh, gum line to gum line. We have a formula for creating the nose. We have a formula for placing the eyes in the skull. One of the, the, I think the clues to this case, it, it's the older man who's about 30, 32 or 33. I had um, wear patterns on his teeth that suggested that he smoked a pipe. Uh, the enamel on his teeth was worn. And so we do notice in some of the old photos of the monitor, uh, that, of the monitor crew, that there's two or three people who are standing around with pipes in their mouths. Whether or not uh, our person could be one of those persons, we don't know. 16 men were lost. Two have been found, only two have been found, so we don't know of the 16 which two we have. Oh, I don't think it's a stretch to try to find someone uh, from 150 years ago. I think with modern technology, the DNA that we have, it, we just need the clue. It's mysteries. It's solving the mysteries. It's the same thing we do with forensic cases. It's just a 150-year-old forensic case. Well, currently, the reconstructions that we completed that are made of clay are at the Smithsonian. They will be on display in the museum in Washington. More and more people are beginning to realize how we can help them get unidentified persons identified. There's two levels of success. One of those levels is getting the case, getting the face created, getting the image out there. And then the other level, of course, the ultimate level, is getting that person identified. And when we are able to get that person identified, uh, it spreads joy and cheer all over the lab. We're so excited. And we're excited to send those remains home to the family in order that they can have uh, some type of resolution to that missing loved one. 